Can it open your heart, your lips, that you may be able to proclaim His Holy Gospel in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. For the last time. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors were shut where the disciples were for the fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see his hands, in his hands the print of the nails, and I place my finger on the mark of the nails, and place my hand on his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, You have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that, believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. So friends, I was deeply inspired and moved by the description of the early church shared with us in the first reading today. The company of those who believed were of one heart and soul. They held everything in common. No one was in need. With great power, the apostles 
gave their testimony to the resurrection of Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. It speaks of a church that is alive, a church that is passionate about sharing the truth of the risen Lord. It speaks of a church made up of believers who care about each other. A church where no one is left behind. And that inspired me. However, it didn't begin like that. This is how it began. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. That's how it began. Imagine that context. There are the 11 gathered in this space, afraid, confused, disillusioned, unable to face life without Jesus. And so they closed themselves in and shut the world out. I know that context in my own life. And I'm sure you do too. Times when we shut ourselves in and close the world out because we are afraid, confused, overwhelmed. These days I just want to stay in my room. But it's to such a context that Jesus comes and he says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. For the risen Lord believes and knows, as I know and you know, we are of little value to ourselves or anybody else if we have no peace. And so he offers us peace. Peace be with you, he says. For Jesus believes that with that peace, his peace in our life, we are able to become stronger, able to face life again with all its challenges. And so he says to us, peace be with you. And then he shows the, us, them, his, his scars, his hands and his, and his side. He shows that to the disciples. All of us have scars, physical scars, emotional scars. And so often we try our hardest to hide our scars. Jesus plainly shows his scars to his disciples, not because he's looking for sympathy. He's showing them as signs of victory. He says, see what they did to me. They thought this would destroy me. I've risen above that. I've risen above that. Again, he says to them, peace be with you. For Jesus knows that we need, with our scars, his peace to help us with the healing, to help us rise again. For, as he says, as the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. Where is it that Jesus is sending you and I in these times? to be instruments of peace, to be instruments of healing, to be instruments of hope. He breathes on them and he says, receive my spirit, my risen spirit, 
that will lift you up. Receive it along with my peace. That's my gift to you. How do we receive those gifts of peace and the spirit of our risen Lord? That we may continue the mission of Jesus. Then he says something interesting. He says, for those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. And those whose sins you retain, they are retained. If I get to heaven, if I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Jesus, why did he give us an option? Because I know when I forgive, I have great peace in my life. And when I don't forgive, I deprive myself of peace. And so where is it in your life and my life that we can forgive more? That we can have this peace that we long for? Who is it that I need to forgive today? Now Thomas was not with the the, the, the disciples when the Lord appeared to them. I was saying this morning, it must have been a rainy day like today because a few people took the option today whether to come to Mass or not. You know? It must have been a rainy day like today. So Thomas stayed at home. One well, it was a sunny day and he went to the beach. But in not being present with the community, he missed an encounter with the risen Lord. That's what he missed. He missed the gifting of peace. He missed the gifting of the Spirit of God. And that's what happens when we exclude ourselves from the community of believers. We miss the blessing. And they say to him, we've seen the Lord. And he says, unless I can see the holes in his hands and can put my finger there and put my, 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 my fist in, in, in the side, I, I refuse to believe. He had his doubts, and that was okay. That was okay. Eight days later, the word says, Thomas was with them now, and the Lord appeared again, and he said to them, Peace be with you. And he comes up to Thomas, and he says, to, He doesn't shout at him. He doesn't chastise him. He knows what his doubt is. He says, Thomas, come here. Bring your hand here. Put your fingers here. Let me help you. Let me lead you to a deeper faith. I know you doubt. The Lord knows I doubt. He knows your doubts. Allow him, the risen Lord, to lead into a deeper faith. Thomas gets to that beautiful point where he's able to say, because Jesus ministered to him in his doubt, he's able to say, my Lord and my God. A profound statement of faith. My Lord and my God. I was saying to Deacon in the week, when I was a little boy and I was asking him, uh, when I was a little boy, we were, we were taught, we were told at the consecration, when the priest lifts up the, the, the consecrated host, we were to say to ourselves, what? My Lord and my God. I hope you still do that. I hope you still do that. An affirmation of our belief in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. My Lord and my God. Jesus does that to us. He leads us to deeper faith. And so that's how it began. A frightened group of people closed in on themselves and shutting the world out. And Jesus comes to them and he blesses them with peace. And he assures them that they can rise from past hurts and that they are part of his mission. And he ministers them in their doubts so that they become the body of Christ, this vibrant missionary church of which we belong. where we were able to say in this place every day, my Lord and my God.
Just a word about peace. Peace be with you. Just, just a word on that peace. Peace is a gift from God. It's a blessing. Blessings are meant to be shared, celebrated and shared. And yet how often you and I throw our peace away. We throw it away. When we're driving on the road and someone irritates us, we get spitting mad. And we throw our peace away. This precious gift that God has blessed me with, I throw it away. And someone irritates me at work and, 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 and I lose my mind. I may not say anything, but I lose my mind. I throw my peace away. I throw it away. So much so that when I come home and you come home, and you need to share this gift of peace with those whom you love. You have nothing left to share, nothing left to give, because you've thrown it away. Experience anew today the blessing of peace. And bless those around you with that great blessing. Peace be with you.